Welcome to Wardell's art tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about John Singer Sargent. Uh, he's an artist who was born in 1856 and died in 1925. Even though he's American, he was born in Florence and he grew up in Europe where his parents lived. Um, he did not come to the United States until later in his life and spent most of his life in the United States in the last 20 years of his life. So he was around all the culture and the artists and impressionists and all the big things happening in Europe in those days. You could say that he was born in the right place at the right time for being an artist. He painted over 900 oil paintings, 2,000 watercolors, and many sketches and charcoal drawings. He traveled throughout France, Germany, Italy, and Switzerland while he was still a child. And uh, his mother would encourage him to sketch and to do watercolors because she uh, was an amateur who uh, painted watercolors. So she would encourage him and his sister. So he had the right background. And if you wanted to be an artist and you had that kind of background and all, yeah, that gets you pretty far really fast. Um, if you're like me or a lot of other artists who is not born in that culture, it makes it uh, more difficult to you know, reach the level that John Sigurd Sargent had reached because of the opportunities he had at his disposal. We have YouTube today, which really helps, but you cannot replace being in the actual museums or being taught by the actual uh, masters and artists of those days. They, they cannot be replaced. So his first teacher was a French portrait by the name of Corollas Durand. He was a, he's a famous artist. And so he had uh, initially influence on him. So we're gonna go over some of his drawings here and see what we can learn from them. Internal light right here. The first book we're gonna look at is a uh, Sargent portrait drawing, 42 works by John Singer Sargent. Now, I'm left-handed and Sargent's right-handed. So sometimes I have to switch my pencil to the, the right hand to show you how he got some of these effects. Now, the silhouette of this, of this woman here, and this, uh, he was drawing the sketch here. You can see here, the economy of means is, is what he did here. He, the line starts out very light here and then it starts out light here and then it's darker here and it comes down this way and it comes darker here, darker here, lighter, darker, lighter, like this. And the hair is kind of just drawn in. The ears, it's just placed in its place. Uh, the, the ear canal, first he was gonna have it here and then he decided he changed it and he put it here. So he's just like noodling along here, you know, trying to figure out where he's going to go with this. Now, to give you an a, a sample of drawings, I mean lines like this here, you can take your pencil like this here and go like, like this. Or you can go like like this, when you know, where I'm burying the lines, and I'm kind of just like sweeping over it. So that gives you, you know, some uh, hint about, you know, how you go about you know, drawing. And I'll go over more of this in, uh, in other lessons, you know, how, how you can uh, draw like this. But the thing about it is, is it has variation in lines as he has here. Now, this here was, was sketch. This here part right here, he took some time to sketch to get the proportions correct. Uh, the rest of it, you know, he sketched it rather loosely and, and, and fast. So kind of went like this here with his pencil like this. And, um, and right here, it's really loose right here, these lines here. And the proportion of the face 
you go by the classic proportion of the face where the, the nose is from the middle of the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose, the bottom of the nose to the chin, and from there you go from the eyebrows to here, and that will tell you where the top of the head is right, right here. Um, you can also find where the oval shape of the face here, or the head, and you can find out where the middle is because the eyes is in a, and an adult is in the middle of the face. So if I went from here to here, that would be from here to here, that would also be the top of the head here. Also, when you look at, at, at eyes, usually, I mean, this is the ideal conditions. They could be slightly a little more or less, but you go, here's the eye right here, and this is between the eyes. It's the same as, as the length of the eyes from here to here like this. So those are some of the ways you can get your coordinates uh, right, and that'll be a starting point for you. The bottom of the nose is the same as the bottom of the earlobe. Uh, the eyebrows is at the top of the, of the ears. Here's the underplane of the nose itself right here, and he kind of sketches this out. And he put the eye sockets in here and, I, and so that the eyes themselves fit inside the eye sockets. And he drew a line here, and um, which is not there in, in, in life, but it, it points out that this here is set in. And so then, you know, he darkened this right here and right here to show that it was setting in with the, with the, uh, with the shadows. This is where you, when, you, when you're doing all the, this and you get this right, and then here you can ha start having fun here when you do the blouse. You draw this really fast here, and you just, and you just look at it and use the right side of your brain, and you kind of go like this, and you look at it, boom, 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 and you, and you draw. So that's, that's one way of doing it. Um, this is another fast sketch. This here, you know, you kind of like probably took a pencil like this here, held it like this here, and drew it like this. You know, drill like this very rapidly. You can see how he drew here, and then he changed his mind. So he, this is the line he wants. This is not the line he wants. So he draws, uh, drew it a little bit darker here, like this, and put it here like, like that. So he uh, he started. Uh, he got tired of uh, painting uh, portraits in in oils uh, for uh, the society. So he started uh, doing them in charcoal. And he would get a pretty good price for them, even if they were in charcoal. So he started uh, on, on that avenue later in his life. If you look at some of these, like these charcoal drawings here, back in his days, they did not have uh, needed er erasers. What he would use was fresh bread, and he like needed it in his hands. And once he had it in there, this here is all in charcoal here. And then he would take the, the kneaded bread and he got wipe it here, wipe the charcoal off here, 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 and like that. And he'd pick out these highlights. This would be all dark and he'd go like this here and lift off the charcoal. So that's one of the te techniques that you, that you can use in your drawings. Or if you're not an artist and you, and, and you, and, but you just want to look at when you look in museums or whatever, you can understand, you can read the drawing and see how uh, the artist came with these effects and everything. I mean, you can look at the lines in there and, and, and no more read the drawing better. Let's see, moving along here, let's see something. He started, a lot of his background is going up and down, up and down, up and down. You'll find that over and over and over, a lot of his portraits. Some reason he likes going up and down. I guess that you know the, the uh, head is vertical, so he's gonna make the background vertical, vertical, vertical. Here in this uh, drawing here, uh, you see the silhouette of, of the face here, and um, he didn't draw the side of the face because it's easy to draw, which it is easy to draw. He just drew it because he thought that it it showed better the features of the, the setter. Um, so, for example, in this drawing here, he probably liked the, the fine little hump underneath the nose, when it, over the nose, which just goes like this here and then sweeps over here to the tip of the nose like, like this. Um, also, you can see here, 
where he starts saying, this is the dark line here, and it comes down and sweeps over here, and then this part, there's no line, it's just a background. Just a background showing uh, the lines, where the lines, and then the line sticks up again and comes dark over here again. Then once you get all this here in here, and he's sh shading like this here, and then you, you can kind of go like over here, you can start having fun over here, you, know, you can sweep over here, sweep over here, and you, you look at the center, and you sweep this way, you know, and you sweep this way, you know, you just kind of like just wrapping this thing up. And then after he shaded all this, he takes his bread, kneaded his bread, and he comes over here and goes like this and this and swiggle it right here and right here. I mean, that's, that's the fun part. When you get to that part, of the drawing when you know that it's successful and everything then you can then you can kind of like play with it and um so and this here is in uh, 1916 this one here was made um another one let me see here i can show you some more of these later on but in, in this drawing here um you can you can see here he, he drew this really rapidly in, in pencil he, he's going like this here you, a lot of times you can tell when a, whether an artist is left-handed or right-handed. 90% uh, of the people are, are right-handed, of course. I'm left-handed. So if I did this, I'd be going in this, this direction. He's right-handed, so he's going in this direction. So a lot of times you can read a drawing and see whether the artist was left-handed or right-handed by if the lines go from the right to left, and then it's going to be a right-handed. Uh, drawing. If it goes from, if it goes like here from left to right, then most likely the artist is a left-handed. So anyway, everything's in the same direction here, and all he's doing is he's drawing it here, and he's going more light here, and darker here, and then he's coming over here and drawing this in here and these lines over here. So this is a very rapid drawing, and he he drew a circle right here. He wanted to make it in the confines. Of his, of this circle here for his composition. Um, for the next um, book here is the John Seeger Sargent uh, Portraits in Charcoal. Um, these are the ones that he uh, uh, I mean, or drew for society where he was when he got tired of uh, doing so many uh, old paintings. This is this is his self-portrait, uh, painted in 1906, when he's in the height of his powers as an artist. And it's got some of the Impressionists in here, influence. It's also got Monet, uh, a lot of it's in Monet, um, and also uh, Velasquez, uh, a Spanish artist, which is influenced on uh, a lot of artists, even to today. And it's uh, economy of means right here. Um, but in another lesson, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, so, we've got some of these right here. This here is his studio, and this is interesting because this would be facing the north, and this is the north light coming through this way. And he can control the light by the curtains over here. And this would be his easel sitting up right here. And that's what he'd be sitting here. Um, if he had a model, say, sitting on this couch over here, he'd have it turned this way and facing this way. And also some guests could, could sit here too. But this is an ideal st studio. You know, not everybody has an ideal studio. I mean, where you got this high window up here and you got the light coming in. I mean, you know, you, you, make, it, you make it a lot easier because drawing and art is not easy. The more uh, you can do, you know, to help you along, the better it is. Um, this here is a pose, uh, drawing the way he's drawing. He had, a, you know, he's just posing here, and he's being very still because this was in 1903, so he had to be still for this. You can see everything's in sharp and everything. So this is like a publicity uh, um, uh, photograph. This here is, he is actually drawing here, you know, because you can see he's out of focus. He's actually looking at the model here, and he's doing it vertically like this here. So this is probably a really a, a snapshot um, taken in the 1920s 
Um, and he's, he's drawing probably very, very rapidly. And notice how he's holding his pencil. He's holding it. He's holding his pencil like like this. You know, he's going like like this. So that, so that there's different ways to hold your pencil depending on uh, what you're trying to achieve. Um, let's see over here. This here uh, drawing is, is, is very rapid. And this is uh, what I call um, drawing on the right side of your brain where you're, you're just you're just looking at the subject you're drawing. You look at the subject you draw, you, and you don't give yourself time to think. And that way you can draw very rapidly, and I'll, and I'll show you that in another lesson, how you do that. But he drew this very rapidly, and you can see there's a lost edge here and a lost edge here, and he, there's, there's a lot of uh, economy of means here, where it's just, he doesn't, he's not striving for accuracy. He's just trying to catch the moment at the time. So he has to draw very rapidly. He's got a globe back here with, where he just outlines it. And there he's like drawing this way and drawing this way and come this way. So, and he just kind of, I'm making sound effects here, but you know, that's, that's what I think a lot of times. But here's a horror line here. But there's a different, different types of lines here, lost and found lines. And sometimes this is really fun to uh, sketch this way. There's one drawing here. Okay, this right, this drawing here. Again, he, he's drawing. He's going like this here, the side of the charcoal this way. But what's interesting about this uh, about this sketch here is, I don't know if you can see it. There's a white line here, and how you get that white line? You take a stylus and you dig into the paper with a stylus and you draw the line of the shoulder this way. And that way, when you take the charcoal or the pencil over it, go like this here, and it leaves that white line there. Uh, that's another technique I'll, I'll show you how to do some, at some, some time. But at least that line there. So that's what he did here to get that effect. That effect. Notice that there's no details in this. Uh, the lines are not, I mean, the eyes are not detailed. The mouth is not detailed. But your mind is, what, is what's putting all these details into the, into the drawing. It's like you're you're dancing with the drawing or you're, you're cooperating with the drawing, your mind subconsciously is in the drawing itself. It makes it a lot more fascinating. If, if you look over here, he has a hard line here to here and a sweep here and a sweep here. And, and, and after he drew all this, it's when he puts these hard lines in there. Yeah, I want to emphasize this, emphasize this, emphasize this, 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 you know, and then he kind of swirls over this way. And it's just an, a, another, you know, technique or something, you know, just to have fun, you know, fun with a pencil and all. But it's just marvelous uh, to see something like that. This here is a good, uh, a good drawing here. Here you have a hard line here, and then it, then it becomes softer here, but it comes really soft here with the shadows coming through this this way. And then over here, this is, you can see how it's, this is just lightly sketched very rapidly. You know, there's, there's no details. The details is in the face itself, <clears throat> not in the hair, <clears throat> not anywhere else. The most important thing is the eyes, and then the lips, and, the, and then the nose. Um, but the rest of it is, is kind of like uh, more or less sketched out even. You don't see any hair strands, individual strands. It's just all masked in. Okay, I want to go back to this book here and show uh, sketch or portrait that Sargent did. Uh, first of all, the background was this charcoal all in here. And all this, it was charcoal here. And then he took his kneaded bread. And this is a good sample how he did, did this. He just wiped it out this way, this way, the folds of it, like, like that. And then he also did it here. And then after this right here, to get this effect, this the softness right here. See the softness. He took his 
bread. And nowadays we use need a racer course. And you just kind of like just picked up on it like like that. You know, to get to get this effect right here. As you can see some of the charcoal is still left back here and, and and then the paper right here. And then you would take a razor like this here and then you'd make a sharp edge right here. And that's how you got that effect right there. Now, one last thing I want to show you this, this last drawing here. It's this drawing here. And uh, I printed this out. Um, and then again, you can see the background up and down, up and down, up and down. And when you look at this, this this uh, drawing, you can see that um, she's a lady who has blonde hair. She has very either light and you know blue eyes or hazel eyes, but they're very light. They're not brown, so you can see that by the shading in there. You can see that she's also blonde, but you you cannot see any uh, the eyelashes at all. You know you see a lot of am amateurs up eyelashes in there like this here you don't need that that I'll tell you right away you know that that that, that you are an amateur and you and, and you have not uh, advanced enough to understand what the human eye is really really registering when you look at somebody you're not looking at each little eyelash so all you did was just put a line right here eyelash here eyelash upper lid right here and there's the pupils right here and another thing I want to point out about this here is a lot of times sergeant he would not draw like curves he would draw in straight lines and that's a good technique to use if you see a curves or a difficult curve or something so his forehead here he drew here and here he's kind of like changing his mind right, right here so he straight line here straight line here straight line here here then here he went down this way from here to here and then he went from here to slightly curve here and then here so these are hard edges but they're straight lines and then right over here it's just shadows over here if i can hold on to this pencil shadows over here and you kind of you know like 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 this and this is where he, he has fun with the charcoal, you know, just drawing this in. Because the face has to be, you know, perfect, has to be like, like the person. If there's something out of the face, if, if a one eye is slightly above than the other one, or the nose is askew, or, or anything, the human eye will be able to see that. But whenever you draw in clothes, it doesn't make any difference. You can just have fun with it. Draw it here. It, so what if this was a little bit this way or this way? It doesn't make any difference because clothes flop around anyway. They're not proportion or, or, or stay in the right place. So he, he drew this here and he drew these lines here and, and, he, and he's doing a sweeping motion, motion here. And look at the, uh, look at the necklace she has on. Your eyes are saying this is a necklace, but all you did was just lines. Boom. He, he's just spacing these lines, equal space, equal space around here. And you and you register that in your brain as a necklace. And you see a lot more detail than, than what he's putting in there. Now, whenever you uh, look at some of these drawings and you see some of these drawings, you can uh, actually, you know, if you see some particular characteristic or something that you like, for example, in this right here, let's say you're looking at his mouth and you go, well, how did he do this this mouth? I mean, it, wow, that looks really great. So, you know, just kind of sketch a little bit. Now, so you do the easy part here first. You know that it goes like this. And then you know that it's going to sweep down like this. So. I'm just kind of like just flying over it. Now you know that this, since this is three quarters, this side of the mouth is not going to be as long as this side of the mouth because we, we've got perspective here. So you kind of like sweep it here like that. Now, and then it kind of comes up here a little bit like this here and it kind of dips down a little bit, okay? Now, what you got to do now is you take the side of your pencil and you kind of like 
sketching in like this here. So you're making making the edges with your pencil. Like this. Now you delineate where the mouth is right here. And you come down here, in the bottom here. I'm just using the side of the pencil right here. I'm kind of like looking. And I'm trying to make this make this stay soft. Make soft edges. Then you come back here. You look at the side of the lips where it turns under. Now, this right here is just whisper. The pencil right here, like this. And this side over here, the same. Just whisper of it. And then the only sharp marks he does is kind of like that. And then he does it over here and over here like this and then underneath here it's a little bit darker and then he keeps all this here very soft yeah. a little bit darker over this way and come over here and make it a little bit darker over here Kind of come back here and clean up some of the size right here. Then we we'll take this here because this is this here too dark like the, like this. So you you can again you can use your eraser like you can lift off, not really smearing it. But you can see that, you know, there's there's very little actual lines in here. It's just mostly like, just, just shading. And over here, which is important, this kind of comes in like, like that. So it kind of like rolls out like like this. Now, this is just is so delicate right, right here that So this is how you would draw this, like, like this. So I um, hope you uh, learned a little bit something uh, today, and uh, I'll talk with you later. Bye.